thyroid gland is formed by ethmus and two loops it lies in the lower part of the neck it is related to the upper part of the trachea and the esophagus the ethmus lies opposite the trachea rings number two three and four while its loops extends upward to the thyroid cartilage and the downwards to the sixth tracheal ring. It is enclosed inside pre-tracheal fascia, which fixes the gland to the larynx. So the gland follow the movements of the larynx and moves with swallowing. This is the thyroid gland. This is the ethmus. Lies over the second, third, and the fourth tracheal rings. This is the two loops covered by infrahyoid muscles. Shape of the gland, it has ethmus and the two loops. Each loop is conical in shape and having an apex, base, and three surfaces. The three surfaces are medial, lateral, and posterior. A small loop is usually present on the upper border of the ethmus. It is called the pyramidal loop. It is connected to the hyoid bone with the fibrous band, which is the remnants of thyroglossal duct, and called levator glanduli thyroidi. The capsule of the gland is separated from the pre-tracheal fascia by a space in which lies a network of anastomosing arteries and veins. This is the thyroid gland, the isthmus. And the two loops, conical in shape, has apex upward, and this is the base, reach about the sixth tracheal ring, and this is the surfaces of the gland. This is the anterolateral surface, and this is the posterior surface of the gland related to parathyroid glands. Relation of the thyroid gland medial surface is related to above to thyroid and the cricoid cartilage with the external laryngeal nerve on its side. Inferior constrictor of the pharynx and the cricothyroid muscle. From blue, it is related to trachea, esophagus, and the recurrent laryngeal nerve in between. The lateral surface is covered by infrahyoid muscles, sternohyoid, omohyoid, sternothyroid, and the anterior border of the sternomastoid muscle. The posterior surface related to superior and the inferior parathyroid glands embedded in its posterior surface, one on each side. Common carotid artery in the carotid sheath, then prevertebral muscles and the prevertebral fascia. This is the muscles anterior to thyroid gland, what is called infrahyoid muscles. This is thyrohyoid, and this is the sternothyroid, and this is sternohyoid muscles and the omohyoid muscle. Arterial supply of the gland, superior thyroid artery, arises from the external carotid artery, which directed to the apex of the gland and accompanied by the external laryngeal nerve which leave the artery at the apex of the gland. The second is the inferior thyroid artery arises from the thyrocervical trunk of the first part of subclavian artery. It ascends to the base of the gland which meet the recurrent laryngeal nerve at the gland. The third one, thyroidia ema artery, arises from the brachiocephalic artery or from the aortic arch and ascends in front of the trachea to reach the ethmus. This is the arterial supply, superior thyroid artery, which comes from the external carotid, accompanied with the external laryngeal nerve. The nerve will leave the artery at the apex of the gland. Branches of the superior thyroid artery Number one, infrahyoid artery passes along the lower border of the hyoid bone. Number two, superior laryngeal artery passes with the internal laryngeal nerve, which pierces the thyrohyoid membrane 
and enter the larynx to supply the mucous membrane of the larynx. The third one is the sternomastoid artery supply the sternomastoid muscle. Number four is the cricothyroid artery which run on the cricothyroid membrane. Then glandular branches which supply the thyroid gland and the anastomose with that of the opposite side. This anastomosis between external carotid arteries of both sides. At the back of the gland, it anastomoses with the inferior thyroid artery, and this is considered as anastomosis between subclavian and the external carotid arteries. Then, inferior thyroid artery it runs first along the medial margin of the scalenous anterior muscle, then turns medially at the level of the cricoid cartilage to reach the lower pool of the thyroid gland where it meets the recurrent laryngeal nerve. Branches of the inferior thyroid artery number one, ascending cervical branch passes upward, inferior laryngeal passes with the recurrent laryngeal nerve to enter the larynx, then tracheal and esophageal branches. Lastly, glandular branches directed to the thyroid gland and anastomosis branches of Subiru thyroid artery of the same side. It also supplies the parathyroid glands. This is inferior thyroid artery arises from the thyrocervical trunk of the first part of the subclavian artery. Venous drainage. Subiru thyroid vein comes from the apex of the gland to ends in the internal jugular vein. Middle thyroid vein is very short and it comes at the base of the gland to end in the internal jugular vein. Lastly, inferior thyroid veins arise from the network in the ethmus and descends in front of the trachea to end in the brachiocephalic vein of corresponding side. This is the venous drainage of the thyroid gland. This is superior thyroid and the middle thyroid ends in the internal jugular vein. Then inferior thyroid ends in the left brachiocephalic or in the brachiocephalic of the corresponding sides. Lymphatic drainage of the thyroid gland, it is drained into nodes on the surface of the gland, nodes on the front and the sides of the trachea, what is called the pretracheal and the paratracheal lymph nodes. Nodes along the carotid sheath, occasionally to retropharyngeal lymph nodes. This is lymphatics here, and this is drained to different groups of lymph nodes as mentioned. Then parathyroid glands, there are four parathyroid glands, two on each side, superior and inferior. Each gland is embedded on the posterior surface of the thyroid gland. This is the parathyroid glands, superior and inferior, embedded on the posterior surface of the thyroid gland. 